Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question 132 pattern. All right, so in this question, we're going to be given an array of n integers called nums, and a 132 pattern is a subsequence of three integer numbers. So we have nums i, nums j, and nums k, such that i is less than j and less than k. So i, j, and k, as it is over here, they represent the index values. And this over here actually represents whatever value is there at that certain index of i, j, and k. So nums i is the smallest value, nums j is the biggest value, and nums k over here is going to be the middle value. So what we want to basically understand is nums i basically refers to the 1 over here, nums j refers to the second number, which is the 3, and nums k, which is the middle value, represents the last number. All right, so we want to return true if there is a 1, 3, 2 pattern in nums, or else we're going to return false. Okay, so over here, uh, we're given a nums over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we don't have any patterns, so we return false. Over here, we do have a pattern, which is 1, 4, and 2, and how does that make sense? So 1, so between in a pattern, so in this case it's 1, 4, and 2, the first number has to be the smallest number, and 1 is the smallest number. Uh, okay, and by the way, by smallest, I mean smallest in the pattern. And 4, the second number, has to be the largest number, which it is, and 2 has to be with the one in between, and 2 is in between of 1 and 4. Now, one thing that I really want to point out over here is that a pattern is not only when uh, the numbers are right next to each other. And it's always going to be true as long as i is less than j, less than k, okay? So as long as this condition is met, we can have a valid sequence. They do not have to be next to each other. And the perfect example for that is this question over here. We do not have a single sequence where they're all next to each other. But for example, we have one over here, negative one, three, and two. So that's a valid sequence. So over here, we have the numbers negative one, three, and two. And that also makes sense. Three is the biggest number, negative one is the smallest, and this in between. And another sequence that we have is negative one, then we have three, and then zero. And that over there also makes sense because negative one is the smallest, three is the largest, and zero is in between negative one and three. So hopefully you understand how the question works right now. And now let's see how we can actually solve this. And before we actually see how we solve it, so a very simple solution to this would be to use three for loops. The first for loop would be to get the uh, whatever is at the i index, then the uh, second for loop for the j index, and third for loop for the k index. And without me explaining why it takes up a lot of time, it's not a good solution. Okay, so now let's see a better or more optimized solution, which is possibly going to work. All right, so this over here, we're going to consider this list that we have to be our nums area. And before we actually go through how we're going to go through this step by step, I will, uh, real quickly, I just want to go through the i, j, and k. So uh, simply, i is going to be the first number, j is going to be the second number, and k is going to be the third or the very last number. And j over here, which is in the middle of the sequence, is going to be the maximum in terms of value when compared to i and k. So between i, j, and k, j has the highest value. Similarly, uh, similarly i has the minimum value compared to i, j, and k, and while k is going to be in the middle. All right, so how I'm going to go through uh, about solving this question is going to be to kind of go through it step by step. So first, let's see how can we actually come up with a solution for i. And before we do that real quickly, what we're going to be doing in this question is we're going to be iterating through our nums list in reverse. So we go year, then year, and then year, so on and so forth, all the way up to the beginning. And the reason for we're doing that should be apparent uh, pretty soon. And one more thing is that while we're iterating through our nums, so the value that we're currently on for nums is going to be referring to the j value, okay? So now let's go down to the question of how do we get i, all right? So I will just call this uh, a list over here and it'll be called our mince list. And the reason for this mince list over here is to find the value of whatever i we have. So this list over here is going to have the same length as nums. So let's just draw that out. And let's just go to the first number. And for the whatever is at the 0th index, it's going to have a value of whatever is at that index. And yeah, I'll go through why we're doing this. Okay. So now the reason for this mince list, like I said, is to find out what our current i value is. And in this case, like I said earlier, the number that we're going to be going over, so if let's say we're at the number 6, we're going to consider that as our j value. So whatever the i value is, it's going to be before the j value. 
not equal to, but before. And the reason it's going to be before is because the index of i is always going to be less than the index of j. So in this case, let's say we go to 12. And what are the possible i values once we go to 12? Well, there's only one possibility, which is the number 6. And well, that's what we got to choose. So now let's go to 3. Again, over here, we have a possibility between 6 and 12. And which one are we going to choose? Again, remember, i has the minimum value. So we're going to end up choosing the minimum, which is 6. So that's pretty simple. And now let's say we go to 4. So we have 6, 12, and 3, and the minimum here is 3. So that kind of continues overall because everything to the left of the numbers like 11, 26, and 4 are all going to be 3. And notice this has the same length as nums um, that we have there. All right, so perfect. So this over here is our i value. We got that taken care of. Perfect. Now we also know how we get the j value. So the j value will be iterating through nums. Now the question is, how do we get our k value? So for getting our k value, we're going to be using a stack. And this approach is pretty interesting because basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through nums i. And each time we go through nums i, we're going to look at its equivalent value at the same index for the mince list. And we're going to add that current value into our stack. And if we add it to our stack, what we're going to basically be doing is we're going to assume that the current value that we've added is the k value, okay? And the reason that we're assuming is the k value is because it's less than the j value and it's going to be greater than the i value that we go over here. I know I said quite a bit of uh, stuff at the same time, so let's just go through this step by step. It should be a lot easier to understand. So while a stack is obviously just going to start off as empty, I'll just draw it pretty big just so it's easy for me to draw around that. Okay, so what we're going to do, first thing, we go to 20. Again, like I said, we're going through it in reverse. So at 20, what our plan or what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this over here is our j value. Simultaneously, we go to the same index, but we go to whatever is at the mince list. So that's 3. And we're going to assume that this is the i value. And now for the k value, we actually don't have anything. So for the first iteration, we're actually not going to end up doing anything. So we're just going to end up adding 20 to our stack over here. So we just add 20. And this is just for the first iteration because our stack over here is empty. So now we go over to the next iteration. So we have 11 and then 3. Again, this is j value, i value. And now we want to check, do we add this to our stack? So 11 over here is actually greater than 3. But before we do that, we want to check, do we have a possible correct answer? And the way that we check if we have a possible correct answer is we're going to get the last element in our stack. So in this case, that's going to be 20. And we're going to, assuming, uh, we're going to be assuming that that's k. And finally, we're going to go to the i value, which is currently 3. So we have 3. And the j value over here, which is currently 11. So 3, 11, 20. So in terms of index, this makes sense. But if you look at the actual condition, this should be the minimum, which is correct. But j is not the maximum. So over there, we have a small mistake. So since this was not a valid solution, that means that we're going to uh, we're going to keep going through our numbers. And so in that case, we're going to add 11 to our stack since that is a possible candidate for the current uh, k value. Okay, so we add 11, and uh, I'm not going to go through this step by step in the sense that uh, each time what we'll actually be doing is we'll be making this i comma j comma k comparison. But I won't be doing it right now, so just assume that it's happening. Okay. So now we go on to 6 and then 3. And again, this is not going to give us a valid combination. So we add 6 to our stack. Same for 4 and 3. So we add 4 as well. Now things over here start to change. And the reason they change is because now when we go to 3, what's happening is that the mince list over here actually has a value of 6. Okay, so before we actually go through this, what that basically is telling us is that everything to the left of 3 Actually, the minimum value, everything to the left of 3, has a value of 6. Since we want to stick with the rule that the i value is going to be whatever is at the least index, so in this case, in the first position, so in that case, we have to change the minimum value that we're referring to. And in this case, we're referring to 6. And keeping that in mind, we want to also change up the k value. So remember that k over here is going to be the middle value in terms of... Uh, maximum and minimum. I'm not talking about position. So in this case, in order to clean it up, we're going to go inside of our stack and we're going to pop out everything for all the values which are less than or equal to 6. And that makes sense because 
6 over here is supposed to be the smallest value and k cannot be greater than the smallest value. So in this case, we remove 4 and we remove 6. So now our stack just has the number 20 and 11. Okay, so now we'll go to the next value over here. So this over here would be the j value that we're on. Then after that, we're going to have this over here as the i value. And again, this is going to be the middle or the k value. And again, we're taking the last value inside of, of our stack. Okay, so over here, let's just arrange them real quickly. So first we have i, which is 6. Then we have j, which is 12. And then we have k, which is 11. Now, if you look at this, this over here actually satisfies our condition. And the condition is the fact that 12 is the maximum, so that's good. 6 is the minimum, and 11 is in between. And besides that, 6 is actually going to be to the left of it, since we actually made sure of that in our mince list. The stack over here, so the stack is ensuring that we get the rightmost value, which in this case is 11, and that's what we actually ended up getting. And finally, 12 over here is greater than 6 and 11. So in that case, we're also going to have that as a valid answer. So that should be it for our uh, explanation of the solution. Okay, so now let's see how the code for this looks like. And yeah, all right, so over here, I'll be going through the code real quickly. And so over here, we basically have two steps. So step one is going to be creating the min list. So let's just focus on that part for now. So over here, we define our min list as an empty uh, list that we have. So for the zeroth index value, what we're going to do is we're just going to take care of that over here. So min underscore list, and we're going to append nums zero to it directly. And that makes our for loop over here a lot easier. So we're going to start off at the first index and go all the way up to the ending. And while we're doing that, each time we're going to go to the min list and we're going to append the minimum of everything to the left of that certain element. And to get everything to the left of it, what we're going to do is we're going to go to nums. We're going to start off at the zeroth index and we're going to go all the way up to index i. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. And we got take we got we took care of the min list. So now we want to take care of our stack, which in other words is the k value. And again, min list refers to the i value. So we uh, just created an empty stack and we'll refer to it later. So now we're going to go inside of a for loop. And the reason we're doing this for loop is to get the j value. And that's because each value that we're currently on for nums while we're iterating through it in reverse is going to be whatever the j value is. So in this case, we're going to start off at length of nums minus one. That refers to the very last index. And the reason we're doing minus one is because uh, length starts off at one and indexing starts off at zero. And then we're going to be stepping by it by negative one. And we're going to go all the way up to negative one. And the reason we're going up to negative one is because that means we're going up to and not including negative one. So that includes, it basically goes up to and including the number zero, which well is the first value. All right, so after we do that, we're doing a quick check over here is we're checking if the j value, so nums j, is greater than min underscore list j. Okay, so in this case, one thing that might happen is that they might be equal to the same thing. And in that case, we're just going to ignore it. All right, so we have that over there. And quick reason about why we're checking it is because if they are equal to the same thing, then we're never actually going to get an answer. So if they're equal to or less than, because nums j refers to the j value and min list j refers to the i value. And like we talked about earlier, i value has to be the smallest. All right, so now we're going to go instead of a while statement. And again, this while statement, the purpose of it is to remove everything which is less than the current min uh, or i value that we're referring to. So this uh, upholds the positioning value and the maximum minimum uh, rules, not values. Okay, so while the stack exists and the last or the topmost value inside of our stack is less than or equal to whatever the min list, uh, current min list value is. So the reason we're doing this is we're going to, and each time if this is true, we're going to pop it out. And by doing this, what is going to happen is that the stack refers to the k values and all the k values less than the new i value are going to get removed. All right, so we took care of that. And after that, we're going to have a check. So we're going to check if the stack exists. And if it exists, we're going to go and go to the top of the stack, or in other words, get the last value in it. So in this case, we're going to go stack negative one. And we're going to check if nums j is greater than it. And if it is, we can just directly return true. And why exactly are we doing this over here? And the reason that we're doing this over here is because if nums j is greater than min list j, so this over here is already taken care for. So we know that the current j value is greater than the current i value. So we have that. And over here, we're doing the other condition. We're checking if the current j value is greater than the current uh, k value. 
And if that is true, well, that means we have an answer and we can just directly return true. And if we don't end up going inside of here and returning true, well, and then in that case, we're going to append the current nums j value to our stack as it could possibly be a value for the k value, right? And we're going to go through our for loop like that. And if none of that actually ends up becoming true, well, the last option we have is returning false outside of our for loop. All right, so now let's try submitting our solution and it should get accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.